Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the most consistent carry Hecarim jungle build currently in the meta. And that is to rush Black Cleaver first, loads of ability haste, health, and AD. Pretty standard into Mana Moon, and then this is where things get spicy. Then, third item, you're going to go for Even Shroud. It's extremely cheap, big power spike item. Whenever you mobilize an enemy with your E or with your R, or if you get immobilized, nearby enemy champions will take 10% damage from all sources for 5 seconds. And it doesn't even have a cooldown, which is kind of crazy the concept is extremely similar to radiant virtue third item on hecarim except radiant virtue got turbo nerfed very expensive item now meanwhile this one is still extremely cheap because riot made it for supports to abuse they didn't intend on junglers building it third item for team fighting we have phase rush nimbus celerity water rocking with eyeball ingenious double ad and health Generally, you'll see Ingenious more on something like a uh, Eclipse Hecarim. However, it's still good because it puts your warding totems, your uh, trinkets of any kind on a lower cooldown. On top of that, it's going to help you to stack your tier faster, which is very, very nice since it's a pretty tight timing to get Mana Moon second and have it be a Muramana. I'm going to pop our W. You don't really have to watch your camp while you're farming it with Q. You can just do that from a distance like that. Hot Lynch scrapping it out. You want to try to keep your three stacks up at all times. Get that extra damage in. Lower cooldown. Malzahar into Zed mid. I think once Malzahar is six, the game's over for Zed. <laughs> but early on, Zed should have the edge. We got another point into our Q to clear more efficiently. We don't need a point in E to clear. We're just going to be doing a full clear here. Top lane is scrapping it out. I'm glad that we're pathing into this. They're fighting it out super hard with their grasps, trying to get those stacked up. Yeah, Poppy's very low. If I had E, I'd go Ganker right now, but I don't have E, so I'm not going to bother. Even though I could probably do it with just Ghost. She'll probably still be there by the time I finish my uh, Krugs here. If I had to guess. That would be the case. So yeah, she's sticking around because she has more HP. She wants to poke him down. We just did a 308 full clear with Leash. Without Leash, it's going to be more around 315, 320. I'll go ahead and hold on to Ghost here since I'm already behind her. I don't think I need to use up my Ghost. I'm glad I didn't. It would have been a waste. There's the kill. I think we win Scuttle Fight against Vi since she went first strike. If she goes anything like first strike or press the attack, she shouldn't win this. I did just lose all my uh, Q stacks though, which is a bit of an oof. Her Q's on cooldown here, so she's going to take a lot of damage. She just lost her flash. If I can get my Q up here, that would be nice. And that is a scuttle. I'm going to cross over. Poppy's playing pretty deep. We use our Q on the minion as we're crossing over to keep our Q up. Oof. <laughs> Rel gets a kill. Looks like Vi was able to get bot scuttle here. Uh, yeah, we should just reset from this position. I don't want to loop all the way back to Gromp. I want to base and get tier. You kind of run out of mana once your blue buff runs out anyway, so tier here is fine. Go ahead and pick up trip. Mm, yeah, I guess that's fine. I wanted to get triple longsword. Can't quite afford it. We'll full clear into top side. Jinx went for Ghost. I'm seeing that a lot more. AD carries taking Ghost secondary, especially on a massive 1v9 AD carries like Jinx and Twitch. Aphelios. Basically, AD carries that lack mobility. <laughs> Ghost may not be very good kind of pre-6, but level 6 and up in multi-target fights, it's way better than uh, heal. She might wish she took Exhaust though later on when Zed's one-shotting her. She doesn't have a proper support to pill her. The only thing she'll have to keep her alive is Malzahar R on Zed right when he is targetable on top of her. Vi hasn't backed yet. We have CS advantage. We can go into her top side here. Her top side should be up. She should be resetting. If she doesn't reset, she's going to be clearing extremely slowly. Very inefficient. 
So I am skipping Krugs here to go grab Wolves and Negromp. Use our E to get on over. Uh, nor a lot of times when you, you're E at full speed, when you hit the plant, it'll pop you over on the other side. Wasn't able to get it there. Wasn't quite fast enough. I suppose we need tier 2 boots for that and full E speed. We may not have been up to full speed there. Yep, here she comes. Smite that down and we'll leave. Go back for our Krug. She's going to waste time chasing. We'll use our little dash. Uh, this might actually work. Poppy's not really respecting my presence here. We'll get her with the W. Oh, that was well played by the Poopy. I'm gonna push her towards the Orn. He's not really able to get anything here though. Wasn't able to find a whole lot. We'll go grab Scuttle. He's got three stack Q up. Might be down to two by the time we get there. Rip, down to none. <laughs> We don't have boots yet, so. You can go for Lucids on your first back. That might have actually been a more sound option in hindsight than long swords. Use the vision from the cone to give, let us jump over with E there. I could go back for Poppy. I'm six now. I think she's trying to reset though. She just cranked the wave. So yeah, I'll reset. Red's not up for another 40. I'm kind of on the wrong side of the map. Hate to reset with R, but what am I going to do? Go dive Malzahar? Probably not. We'll go ahead and pick up these and come back out. So if you can afford it on your first back, it's fine to get tier and lucids on Hecarim. Extremely viable, pretty good tempo. It will leave you squishy, but it won't really hurt your clear since you get the extra loose. The extra ability haste. I just decided to go for tier two long swords. Now I have my lucids for the better ganks. We'll still be going for black cleaver, man moon into even shroud. I need to go bot lane like right now. Hello, Jinx. Popper with R. Got it. And got it. We're at triple Q stacked here, so I'm outputting a lot of damage. Absolute heaps. I'll probably take Dragon off that. That was big for us. Having the tier 2 boots is really useful. Staying on top. People miscalculate Hecarim's damage output because when you're fighting them, they're thinking, alright, so it comes in a little bit at a time and they measure it out but they don't realize that you don't have your Q stacked yet a lot of the times and then all of a sudden your Q's full stacked and then they're they're confused how you're doing so much damage a lot of players still aren't really aware of that it's a relatively recent change i'm pretty sure they added that within the last year year and a half so people just don't play against hecarim often or maybe they came back to the game they're just not aware of that at all just how impactful the triple stack is because i think it used to stack up to twice but it didn't really matter that much the stacks weren't really that relevant but it's 80 and ability haste on his q so it's pretty important another big fight bot side looks like my bot lane got the upper hand fortunately and i literally missed scuttle that sucks she kind of has more items than me there since I'm sitting on 1200. If I would have killed Scuttle, I would have fought that all in, but she got the heal from killing it and I didn't get it, so. Go ahead and just pull off that. We also have a full clear top side with a ultimate gank coming on here, so. Took advantage of that. You can use your Q before your E lands. You can use your Q through pretty much anything on Hecarim. It doesn't cancel your autos. You can use it during your W, your E. And just spin around. Maximize your E movement speed duration because once you actually connect with your E, it, <clears throat> you'll lose that movement speed. So there's some situations where it's better not to auto and to run with them for a, a bit. Save it for as long as possible until you kind of have to use it. 
assuming they're trying to get away from you. If they're fighting you to the death, a lot of the times it's better to use your E sooner. If you think you can win the fight with more auto attacks. Down goes the Orin. I think we could kill her here. Depends on if it's warded. Oh, she just burned dash. That's a pretty funny interaction. Red buff auto's OP. If she hadn't burned her dash, she lives there for sure. But she also burned it going the dangerous direction as well. Got the wave push. We'll get a plate off this as well. And Orn doesn't miss any minions on this. She probably thinks she wins this. <clears throat> Maybe she does. Yeah, I think she actually did win that. <clears throat> she did a good job of landing everything. I need a reset here. Leave my control word there for some vision and we're on out. I need to spend my gold. She has way more gold spent. Got black cleaver now. Very nice. Pick up oracles control word. Typically around level six is when you're supposed to get oracles for drag fights. Pretty good CS. 12 minutes in. Nearly 100 CS. We have a lot of ganks as well. Or at least 4 KP out of 7, over 50% KP. We want to try to have 3 Q stacks when we go into a gank. That way we can have maximum damage output. It doesn't always work out that way though. Because they fall off really fast once the first one falls off. It's extremely rapid. Oh, well, we know this is warded. Why top side? I'll push into a jungle and take red buff. They're going to expect me to be here. Wards give vision for a second or two after you break them. So they, they literally know I'm here. They're paying attention at least. There's two top, one mid. Their bot's missing. Yep, they're literally looking for me. Did exactly what I thought they were going to do. And I'll still get all this stuff anyways. Since they registered me not in her jungle, she's probably not even going to invade my jungle. She just doesn't think I'm over here. Kind of want to come right over. Oh, uh, is this a fight to the death? Hey, Jinx. Oh, she got it. <laughs> you run her down, run her down, push her back. Nice. I love Black Cleaver. Jinx gets a kill, but they both die. <coughs> That's solid. We'll take it. Vi might try to find a kill here. I'll hover. She needs to just let Vi hit her. This might be warded. Miles went missing. Ping that back, go for big chunk of mana moon. We'll play into dragon with this item purchase. I think they knew I was here. It was probably a normal ward in there. But I went for a clip. Super bursty build. Kind of like it. It's giving her 150 gold. That's decent amount. 150 damage. Uh, I mean, it's not horrible in terms of damage output. Interesting. I think I'd still prefer Hellblades, though. Then what she built... What? I needed to get my W on first there. We pop R, get the double fear, get her smite. Tried to get behind her, couldn't quite pinch it. My E ran out right as I was behind her to knock her. Fighting Hecarim and River, that's tough, man. They needed to think about that. The water walking, extra 25 movement speed, 18 extra 80. That's that's nearly, that's like eight, 900, what is that? That's nearly a thousand stats, like a thousand gold worth of stats right now. Cause 25 movement speed is boots, which is 300 gold, right? 18 AD is almost two long swords. Two long swords is 700 attack damage. So that's nearly a thousand gold value. So if you're if you're equal items to someone, or if they have more items than you, and you're fighting them in river, and they probably have water walking, really need to consider that. And she did not consider that. We're on a pretty big power spike. Tears almost finished. Gotta love that ingenious hunter. 
stacking it up more, putting it on a little bit of lower cooldown plus with our trinkets as well. The main the main thing is, is since there's no ravenous hunter, you can only really go for treasure hunter or ingenious because relentless isn't that useful because it's only on that initial impact damage. These guys are in trouble for sure. We're scaling like crazy. I can go back and get Muramana. My mana moon will turn into Muramana since my tier's finished. It's huge gold value. Got blue jungle item finished. 16 minute mark. Nice, nice, nice. Get our Q stacking. E in behind her. Push her towards the Orn. I'll R for it. Pop her with my smite. That gives me Nimbus. We got bush speed up as well. She went for green jungle item. It's not finished though. She misses out on her blue buff here. That feels bad. I'll let him have it. I already have a blue buff. Oh, I got it anyway. It's even better. So I still get credit for trying to let him have it. I wanted to push him, but with Malzahar's shield, it's like a half a second after you break it. He still has... He's like immune to CC. So I couldn't use it yet. For those of you wondering why I didn't bash him towards Zed. I would have had to overstay and then get Ard underneath this turn and possibly die. We'll use Bush speed up, go for the Jinx. She is tier 2 boots, 0 HP, 0 armor items though. Boom, there's the phase rush. Juicy. My R is about to be up, I'm on triple Q stacks as well. We win this hard. Mm, I can't get to her. I can get to Malzahar though. He's running through the river area. I think I can actually catch up to him unironically. Huh. Oh, okay, so I literally did catch up to him. Sick. Very sick. Very nice. I shouldn't have put a point in my E there. We still get the knock on her. That's a really funny interaction. My black cleaver is shredding her face hole. I kind of have to run though. Ooh, that was really well played by the poppy. Good bait. Shocked to see Jinx there. They got a huge shutdown on her. It's worth for them. Let's say I didn't have a shutdown or it was only a small shutdown. Then that wouldn't be worth because they lost her. But since she got a thousand gold, that's actually worth for them to give a turret for free to hunt me down like that. We got our mana moon, and now we go for the even shroud. Nice, nice, nice. Control word. Still have dragon advantage. Not too worried about this late game. Even though Hecarim's not the best late game character ever, like a Kel or a Vigar or a Nasus. Uh, he's fine, especially if you have drags. We have a very good late game with the Seraphine Orn. I forget what the gold value was, but it was something along the lines of Orn gives his team... It was like 6,000 free gold that the enemies can never catch up on since Orn's building... You only have six item slots in League, and Orn turbo buffs one of your item slots. So Orn's actually like one of the best late game tanks in the game because of that interaction. Those extra stats that the enemies can never really catch up on so if Orin's team makes it to late game and they have dragon advantage it's pretty pretty strong it's one of the hardest tanks in the late game to beat because of that reason so far i think he can only upgrade his own item like at level six or eleven then he can start upgrading his teammates items We all, oh, we can go back and get even shroud. We're basically full build 20 minute mark. Nice. I'll pull this out a little bit. I want them to have to full commit. If they want it. Also, if they were over the wall, they won't be able to see it. Have it pulled out pretty far. I want this blue. I'll back for even shroud, then we'll do Baron. We could just look to do Baron right now. I'd like to get my Mythic. It'll give me some extra armor magic resist as well. 
To wrap up this build, you can look for Dead Man's Force in Nature. I think Frozen Heart's a bit of a sleeper item because it's relatively inexpensive. The mana plays well into your mana. And their team definitely is physical damage heavy, so... Frozen Heart would be very solid, I think. Why don't we just do Baron? Two of them are dead. They're trapped in base from inhibs. We do half damage since we're the one tanking it. Oh, my teammates literally didn't even come over here. No way. Well, hopefully they don't feed Jinx a bunch of shutdown here. I can't really solo this. Can I? Maybe. She's actually taking my red buff while I'm doing this. <laughs> That's awesome. Good teamwork. If you could do full damage to Baron, we would have finished it so much sooner. Twice as fast, basically. We got our W down, so he's doing reduced damage. Pop him with the R. Down he goes. I'm on some ghost extensions as well. I'm going to take all this. She, she took the time to take my red buff while I'm doing Baron. She doesn't need to farm this. You took the time, Kaisa. I would have let her have all of that if she would have actually just came over there. We don't need to go bot anymore. We have that inhib. We just need to go top and mid. We're also playing for Drag Soul here. And now I run away with Phase Rush speed up. Oh, Jinx lands it. I'm on E speed up though, so she can suck it. Yeah, you're not going to run me down, bro. I have bush speed up. Boom. I do a little bit of kill stealing. <laughs> we do a little bit of that around here. Yeah, Ghost Jinx is interesting. I think it's better on Twitch, though, since Twitch gets uh, Q resets. Boom. Pop her with that. Got it. Heck of spicy, dude. I really like this Hecarim build. Sets you up lots of damage in the early game, so your ganks and clears aren't affected. But then in the team fight portion of the game, you're plenty tanky to where you can stay alive. AoE apply your cleaver. Our Baron minions are going to finish this here. They have to hit the minions. If they hit me, they lose. And that, guys, is GG well played. We'll take a look at the graphs, damage dealt, damage taken, and runes. Looking at damage dealt to enemy champions, we have the most damage dealt in the game with this kind of tanky, supporty Hecarim build. It just goes to show that Hecarim only needs two sources of damage that give lots of ability haste, such as Black Cleaver and Muramana. And then it doesn't really matter what you build on him, you can still do the most damage in the game. For damage taken took the most in the game too that's a little surprised by that honestly i thought orin would have been and self mitigated almost self mitigated the most too all right yeah this build is a little cracked for runes ultra high value you could go for conk ignite i would only do that if you need it to kill the enemy jungler solo like they'll kill you in your jungle if you don't for example if you're up against warwick i like conk ignite on hecarim because you don't have to worry about that but you could still say oh with phase rush you can get away from it which is true if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.